friends, I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome, one and all, to the Robot Rumble. Yes, the next four weeks are dedicated to giant robots fighting in all its glory. And we kick off this theme month with a movie about boxing? Ah, but this is not ordinary squishy human boxing with its brain injuries and associated maladies. <laughs> Oh no, these are giant robot boxers, free of the frailties of soft, soft flesh. These giant robot boxers are walking, punching titans of real steel. Which, as luck would have it, is the title of today's subject. Yeah. Released in 2011, Real Steel traces its history back to a 1956 short story, which was later adapted into an episode of the original Twilight Zone TV series. An ex-boxer and his estranged son build a robot fighter together who starts winning, and might even have a shot at the championship. Real Steel received mostly positive reviews, and there is talk of a sequel, though as of 2016, this remains in development hell. So strap on your motion compensators and put up your dukes as the Robot Rumble gets underway with a heaping half ton of... Real Steel. Meet Charlie Kenton, a washed up former boxer. He's drawn into the fate of Max, his estranged son. And he drives a hard bargain. You see, our Charlie owes money. He's not been winning of late, and he needs to get back in the game. Which buys him a new robot, since his last one got totaled by a bull. Ooh, crunch. Mess with the bull and get the horns. <laughs> Cliché, I know, but it's a sports movie. You're allowed at least one. And so, father and son will spend one last summer together before returning to his aunt in August. But Charlie's overconfidence is his weakness. We'll take Midas! And Noisy Boy pays the price. This is the underworld, kid! There are no rules! Well, so much for Noisy Boy. He was designed by the legendary child prodigy Tak Mishido, don't you know? Of course, more recently, Mishido's moved up in the world somewhat. Ah, but we'll get to that. Without a robot, or a hope, Charlie goes scrap hunting. Now, it's about this point that we get a potted history of robot boxing, along with the reasoning behind the sport. Essentially, it all boils down to those twin evils, money and spectacle. The punters wanted spectacle, the promoters wanted money, and human fighters just couldn't keep up. Thus, robot boxing was born. And the rest is history. But scrap hunting is a dangerous pursuit. Lucky for Max, a robot saves his life. Charlie! In return, our young protagonist rescues this rusted robot rumbler, who just happens to have a mimic function. This is notable for its rarity. I imagine that in the early days of the sport, boxing by proxy was more of the norm. But these days, perhaps not so much. At least until... well, we'll get to that. And so to Atom's first fight, a backstreet bare-knuckle affair. Now, this would be the point where I'd hand over to our commentator Brian Monkfish, but his new contract stipulates professional bouts only. Too flipping right. I've got standards, you know. Yes, Brian, we know. Long story short, Atom wins. And so, father and son agree to train their bargain basement box bot. Now, some years ago, back while human boxing was still the norm, Charlie was put up against the top contender for the title, one Nico Tandy. This was supposed to be an easy fight, an easy warm-up for Tandy, but nobody told Charlie that. Maybe Max is thinking that some of his pop old magic will rub off an atom. Well, he's not far from the truth. But again, we'll get to that. 
And via the gift of montage, Atom gets his streak. And a shot at the big time. Or they could take 200 grand to be the champ's chew toy. But Max won't hear it, and the fight is on. Which would go about as well as you'd expect. Until we discover that Twin Cities has a tell. The tides are turned, and Atom makes his mark. As does Max, calling out the champ. I challenge Zeus to a fight! Eh, uh, it's creepy little box spot in a championship. It'd be the best upset in all the robot boxing. But the vacation's over, and Charlie makes good on his offer. Me, you, and a robot from the junk heap are gonna ride off into the sunset. Oh, I've been there. And I mean, it ain't just imposter syndrome. That's like, it's a hell of a thing to give up on yourself, you know? Until he doesn't, revealing that they have the fight with the champ. And so we reach the all-important battle with the autonomous box bot Zeus. Which goes about as well as you'd expect. But our scrappy scrap heap has his trainer's grit and determination. And it looks like he's getting back up, so we'll quickly hand over to our commentator at ringside, Brian Monkfish. Take it away, Brian! And then he hits back. And our courageous chrome combatant manages an entire round against the champ. And the mighty Atom incredibly goes the distance, lasting round after round. Until his voice recognition circuit fails. There's only one option. Charlie Kenton must step in and take it to the champ himself. Zeus hits our bargain basement underdog with the fists of an angry god. But at the last possible second, the underdog bites back. Which leads legendary designer Tak Machido to take the reins of Zeus, his creation. Which doesn't seem to help, as Charlie Kenton, in spirit at least, puts his all into the last human fight and manages to go the distance. And while the judge's decision goes against them, I don't think anyone can argue who the real winner is. People's champion? Sounds pretty good to me. Yeah! Thanks, Brian. Brian Monkfish, folks. So that was Real Steel. And in the battle of Real Steel versus the Robot Rumble, this one goes to the judges. I felt every single blow of this movie. Physically, emotionally, honestly I was drained. The plot is the basic underdog story, sure. Washed up nobody lucks out on a piece of junk, said junk turns out to have staying power, rises through the ranks to face the champ, and win or lose, the crowd goes wild. But it's mostly inoffensive, and the kid isn't annoying, which some kids can be. And seeing as how the story it's adapted from skews much darker, in that the protagonist of Steel actually bodily steps into the ring to take the pounding of his life, I personally would take this version any day. The performances are solid, unspectacular, but believable. And in the case of Hugh Jackman's Charlie Kenton, bone crunching, as we feel every hit that his robot fighters take and every blow life deals him, and we empathise as even he has given up in himself. And then along comes Max, and Atom, and their luck starts to change, and Charlie Kenton, the former pro fighter, begins to believe again, if only for one night, that he can go the distance. And the support? Dakota Goyo's Max had the potential to be another annoying kid in a family movie, but transcended this with real heart. And them puppy dog eyes. The climactic bout was as piston crunching as you'd expect, blending animatronic robots with CG, and I wouldn't be surprised if more than a few of those scenes had an actual robot in them. So then, my verdict? It's a win. Real Steel is a great introduction to the sports movie genre. So in a judge's decision, by the narrowest of margins, the fight goes to Real Steel. But I think the real winner is you, the viewer. This is Review Unit Funky Monkey, offering you a weak human pleasantry, and signing off. End of line.
Join the heroic legion of Patreon subscribers today! You could get your name in the credits, early access to new episodes, request your favourite game, movie or anime to be reviewed, or even be in the show yourself. Sign up at my Patreon site. I'll see you there!